Hey what's up guys it's Benbonk and welcome back to the 18th slime keep devlog. In this video I added a mech slime boss to the game and I also made some changes to the health UI and dash mechanics. But if you're new here, slime keep is a fast paced roguelike where you must kill and capture slime to stop the corruption that has infected your land. So without further ado, let's get into it. First up, I made some small changes to the pet slime. Previously, the pet slime wouldn't always correctly face the player or the enemy it was attacking, and sometimes the pet slime would get stuck in the place at a dead enemy's position. So I made some changes to the pet slime code, and now the pet slime should always have the correct rotation and should not get stuck. Next, I got a lot of feedback from you guys in the last video about the pet slime's new look. Some were positive, but I'd say most people weren't too fond of the new look, so yet again I got to reworking the pet slime's appearance. I tried adding this white outline and experimenting with that. After setting things up, here's what the pet slime looked like. I'm still not totally sure if this look is final, but I think it does help the pet slime stand out a bit, so please let me know what you think, it really helps me out. The last small change I did was finishing up the poison slime. Previously, he left a trail, but it didn't look too good, so I wanted to change that. In the end, I decided to remove the trail as I thought it would be a pain to optimize and plus it was a little overpowered, but thanks to everyone who offered feedback on how to implement a good looking and efficient trail. Inside of the trail, I made this goop system where the slime would place goop and then upgrade. This goop was much less of a threat compared to the trail, but I think it works as things can get tight when there are a lot of other slimes in the room. I also made the short animation for the goop, and there we go, poison slime was finished for now. Next, I really wanted to start working on the first boss for slime keep. I had a few ideas, but I wanted to see what you guys wanted me to make first, so I made a YouTube poll, and after a few hours, most of you guys voted for the mech slime, so I started working on him. But don't worry my DJ slime fans, I got you, and I'll definitely be working on him in the future. Anyways, I got to drafting out some ideas for the mech slime. My goal for this boss was for him to have two arms, one arm being a missile launcher, and the other arm being a flamethrower. I also wanted him to have three stages. The first stage is just a normal stage where he'll either randomly shoot missiles or move towards the player with his flamethrower. The second stage being the exact same as the first stage, but a bit faster and with more dangerous attacks. And a third stage where the mech slime suit blows up and the slime has a smaller missile launcher. Now it's time to make some art for this boss. Thankfully, a few months ago, Wussy Wizard made this awesome mech slime concept gift that I remembered about, and it just looked so good that I decided to base my mech slime off that gift, with Wussy's permission, of course. So for the next few days, I really just got to work creating this mech slime. It was quite a process and took a decent amount of time, but in the end, I think the slime looks really good, even if he is kind of a copy. I then got to work in animations, and this took a few days. The mech slime needed a lot of animations from walking, shooting, dying, etc. And additionally, unique animations for the final stage of the boss. I also needed to make the missiles he'd shoot, the flamethrower effect, explosion animations, and so much more. So I think you can see why this took so long. But you know it doesn't take that long? Wishlist scene slime keep on Steam. Seriously, if you haven't wishlisted slime keep on Steam yet, please consider doing that. It really helps out with the Steam algorithm and it'd mean a ton to me. Anyways, you may be wondering how many bosses are gonna be in the game. Honestly, probably not too many initially. If you've been following Slimecube development for a while now, you probably know that the progression is a bit different from other games, so I probably won't have too many bosses as it can take upwards of a month to create by myself. Getting back to things, after a few days I didn't have all the animations done, but a fair number of them, so I started trying to get the boss somewhat functioning. Remember that test boss setup I did a few devlogs ago? That actually came in pretty handy as I was able to take things from that boss and implement them into the mech boss. This boss has a main mech boss script which handles most things like taking damage, and then also state machine behaviors for independent attacks. After tons of setting things up, finally the first version of the mech slime was set up. Some of his animations were in there, but there's still obviously a ton of work to be done. After setting more things up and some feedback from my awesome discord server, I gave the mech slime a sort of pause between steps. However, as you can see, it just really didn't look too good. I decided I needed to rework the mech slime's sidewalk animations, so I spent a few more hours there completely changing the mech slime's sidewalk so he didn't really look like a crab anymore. After some work, I think this was a success, and the walk looked way better and more natural now. You can also see that I added in a flamethrower effect made by Toasted Toast. I thought this effect looked awesome, but it was a little too small to actually be a threat. So into a spread again I went and upscaled this art, which is a bit of pain to do, but in the end I think it was a success, and the flamethrower was actually a threat to the player now. With the flamethrower attack kind of done, I started setting up the missile attack. Here you can see that the boss moves his arm and fires a missile. It'll stay straight for a few seconds, but then move towards following the player. But I didn't really like how sharp this transition was, so I used tweening to make this super smooth rotation before following the player, which looks really good in my opinion. 
In this missile will just follow the player for a few seconds and then destroy itself. You can't shoot at it to destroy it, and it's not too much of a threat on its own, but combined with the flamethrower attack, things can get scary. Next, I made a bunch more small changes, like making the flamethrower flame come out and retract, making it so that the mech slime shoots three missiles instead of one in the second phase, creating a phase two intro animation, setting up the death animation for the mech, and getting the phase three animation set up. I then set up the phase three logic with some missile attacks, and finally, the core mech slime was pretty much done. Though I still wanted to add some polish, so I created some missile explosion animations and attempted to create a hurt flash effect, though as you can see, this effect looked kinda bad and way too noticeable. I spent some time messing around with the materials, but I couldn't really get anything to work, especially trying to get a tinted transparent material to overlay on a sprite. I was really stuck, so I decided to ask my man Andrew, developer of Tadpole Tales, because I noticed he managed to create this effect in his game. He was really nice and showed me how he did this effect, and after some tinkering, I got a subtle hurt flash effect working. I think this effect is really nice, so shout out to Andrew for helping me, and make sure to check out his game Tadpole Tales on Steam. It's actually pretty fun and free. Next, I added a few more final pieces of polish, like adding this chest, which spawns after you defeat the boss, which you can open, and I created this function, which is called whenever the mech sign takes a step, which shakes and rotates the camera a little bit, which is a subtle but nice effect in my opinion. With all that done, I'm happy to say that the mech sign is pretty much done for now. I still have obviously a lot of work to do, like on his health bar and room layout, but I think this is a great start. But before I continue with the video, I'd like to thank the sponsor of this video, Exola Site Builder. Exola Site Builder is an intuitive, code-free tool that can help you craft the right website for your game. Design anything you need from a simple landing page to a complex community hub. You can start with a dev-friendly template from their catalog and customize it to match your game's design or build your website entirely from scratch. Plus, Exola makes it easy to sell directly from your website and offers tools to simply sell all your game's keys through one single website without having to hassle around dealing with different platforms. You can also sell pre-orders, in-game items, and whatever you'd like. Additionally, the website builder gives you control of your data and makes it easier than ever to view traffic, conversion rates, and other metrics for your website. Finally, there are no upfront costs, so give it a shot now. Just insert your Steam game page link and instantly create a website for your game. Thanks again to Exolo for sponsoring this video. To start using their site builder, you can register for a publisher account, create a project, and activate the site builder's functionality. The next thing I started working on was upgrading the weapon art. The old weapon art was honestly really outdated and needed some work. Thankfully, Paperboy made some really cool art a while ago, so I took his sprites, modified a few of them, and added them into the game. I think they look better overall, but they're pretty big compared to the player, so that might be an issue. The last major thing I did was reworking the health system slash health UI for the game. Previously, I wasn't too happy with the hearts, and I kind of wanted to make something more interesting and unique. I got some feedback from my Discord server, and I decided to go with a health bar system. Thanks to everyone who made concepts, but in the end, I really like not him's concept, so I kind of went with that. I made a few small changes and started setting the health bar up. And honestly, I'm really not the best UI guy, so this took me a while. But eventually, I got a basic system in place without any polish. I also then got to work creating and setting up a kind of shield system, which is the little white bar just below the health bar. My intention was for this bar to function like the health bar, but have some sort of special ability or effect when the player takes damage from the shield. After setting things up, you can now see that if there's a shield, the shield will take damage before the health bar. I'm still not totally sure what the special effect will be, but if you have any ideas, please let me know. The final health bar related thing I did was actually changing the dash mechanic. You may have noticed these three slots on the health bar, and my idea was for these three slots to represent the dashes you have left. Right now, the player can dash approximately every two seconds at a fixed rate, but I thought it could be interesting to give the player no initial cooldown on dashes, but have the dash be used up and the player would have to wait for the dashes to replenish over time. After some programming and setting up of the UI, I got the system in place. I still don't know if it's going to be final, but I think it could make the player have to think about their dashes and use their dashes more effectively, which could offer some interesting gameplay. But again, let me know what you think. Finally, the last thing I did in this devlog was I spent some time polishing the health bar. I did a lot, like making it so when the player takes damage, the health bar will shake, made this tick down effect that lags behind the health bar, which is actually pretty neat in my opinion, and made the player icon animate. And I also made some shaking effects for the dashing UI, when the player either dashes or gets a dash replenished. With that said, that's going to be the end of the video. I hope you guys liked it, and again, if you'd consider wishlisting Slime Peep on Steam, that would mean a ton to me. Also, shout out to all the people who've been creating art for the game. 
I really appreciate it and I'll try my best to keep showing people Slime Keeper related art towards the end of these videos. Additionally, if you consider subscribing and giving the video a like, that would also mean a ton to me. Anyways, I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.